we came across the first ever flat floor fifth wheel on the internet and we were asked to do a review on it so here's what we think of it we are Dave and Karen from Watts on Wheels and we sold our sticks and bricks to RV full time now that we are retired. We travel with our heavy duty truck Leroy, our two K&M motorcycles, our DRV Dixie and our smart car Zippy. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell to be notified when we post a new video. Although we didn't see it in person, we were able to get a good look at it on their video on YouTube. And the link is in the description below. We found this flat floor fifth wheel on YouTube and it was posted by Arrowhead Camper Sales out of Mayfield, Kentucky. We contacted them to see if they would give us permission to take screenshots of it from their YouTube channel and to comment on it and we were given approval. So Dave hasn't seen the YouTube video on this first ever flat floor Columbus fifth wheel with a motorhome storage. I told him about it but he hasn't seen the video. So I'm going to play the video and then we're both going to make comments about what we think about the amenities of this RV. To start with, just to let you know, it's manufactured by Forest River. It is 42 feet long, 8.5 feet wide, 13 feet 6 inches tall, 75 gallon freshwater tank, 75 gallon gray water tank, and 39 gallon black tank. It has two awnings, sleeps four, and has four slides. And the price is under $90,000, new. So, looking at the picture of it on the exterior of it, I think it looks very nice. It, you can tell it has a ton of storage. Yeah, pretty much so, it looks like any other fifth wheel. And it, it has the one, two, three, four, uh, more ride steps. In the video, they are now entering into the RV. And what do you see, Dave? Steps. Looks like three of them. It has pretty much the same typical floor plan as most Smith wheels, where you have the living room in the back, like ours, and you get the kitchen, and then the, the bedroom is at the front. Right. So now we're looking at the kitchen area, and it has the nice residential refrigerator it, with the ice maker and the water in the door. It has a large gas stove. It looks like a four burner. But it's not flush with the countertop. You can't do any work. There's no lid that you close yeah. or anything like that. I'm not opposed to that. Okay. And they got the microwave convection oven up on, on the top. And then next to it, just like an RRV and most of them, is the entertainment center. And then they have the sofa in the back like we're sitting on now. And then they have... Two lazy boy recliners off to the sides. Has the island in the middle with the big faucet. And I do see... Um, on top of the sofa, like we have above ours, is storage. Sto they, they're not very tall. They're, no. They're short. They're, yeah, they're short. And there's a reason for that. Uh, because the ceiling's so short. The other side, where the love seats are... Zero storage above the, the seats and that. Yeah. Yeah, no Table, just, seats. Yeah. One thing that is nice about this one is it does have a pantry. Well, they have them U-shaped shelves in it, but I'd rather have just the shelves. shelves and make them deep. But as you pass the dinette and you go towards the entry door... But they have a, like a baby gate that you close around the steps to keep you accidentally... Uh, Falling down the pit. <laughs> taking a header down the steps. That takes up square footage there. <clears throat> That's good, though, if you have kids or you got pets. Oh, yeah. But every time you go to answer the door, you got to lift up the gate. Fold it over, ah, you just, go down the steps and open the door. You just scream out the window, <clears throat> what do you want? I, I like the flatness, but it also now is bringing down the type, the height of your ceiling. Right. So you lose that storage inside, and I'm now sure. the storage is outside. And then as they proceed straight, no steps down towards the bathroom, it's pretty typical as far as the bathroom and bedroom goes. They have a um, double vessel in the bathroom. They have a pop-up television above the fireplace in the bedroom. Personally, I'd rather have storage than a fireplace in my bedroom. Well, if it's a heater. Well, that's true. They don't have any storage above where the TV pops up. Well, yeah. Oh, I'd rather have just storage. I'm not a big TV watcher in the bedroom. The bedroom's made for two things. Sleep and changing clothes? That's right. So it comes with the washer dryer closet and then you can transform it in 
to the wash and dryer area. And it has the sliding doors for a regular closet up front. And it has some shelves built into the nose. Not a lot of shelves. And it looks like a queen bed. That's a queen. And of course it has the two extra chairs for the dining room underneath the bed. So it has that storage. The headboard is... Nothing fancy. <laughs> and there is a nightstand on the left side and no window there. And there is a window on the other side and a window behind the headboard. I don't really care to have the windows behind me. I'd rather have storage. Yeah. They don't have storage above I like, the bed. I like the bedroom dark. Yeah. But no, no storage above the bed. The bathroom sink is pretty big. That looks nice. I think it's small. I don't really better have the one sink. They have a little seat that folds down in the shower, which is never seen that before. It's kind of neat, and it's got the movable wand. The it's got a little got linen, linen closet in it. It also has um, access from the bedroom directly into the bathroom. Jack and Jill door. Coming back towards the kitchen, they have the control center, and it's all electronic. I'm sure it's all Wi-Fi and all that, which is very nice. You can make adjustments for all kinds of things. And they've got a pop-up power center. It's got um, a fancy sink with lots of gizmos in it. That's pretty nice there. But one thing that I have heard about these big, square, deep sinks is it's hard to get the corners clean. The thing is, too, that's not an undermount sink either. I like the undermount sinks. This would be then it's always hard to get stuff up and over the yeah, over the little lip. Yeah. It comes with quite a few accessories. Mm -hmm. The problem with that too is if you don't want that in sink, where do you put it? Underneath the sink. Takes up storage. Yeah. They do have pretty good space on either side of the cooktop to do your preparation. Plus you have the island. Yeah. One thing one thing I'm not a fan of though is they have a window right behind the cooktop. Yeah. Uh, that just spells, uh, with a blind and everything in front of it, that just spells Grease City. I agree. How would you clean it? So their dinette is just a table. It doesn't pull out of the wall to extend, but it has a fold-up. Mm -hmm. You probably have it up all the time. Walk around it, yeah. Because you'd always have to have that up. Because when you go to sit down, you'd hit, your knees would hit it, trying to climb into the chair. Now it looks like they have linoleum flooring just in the kitchen and wow. all the way across the indoor outdoor boat or that's that boat mat stuff oh you know i i'm okay with that <laughs> i'd be okay with that and then they got the love seat with all the buttons all electric they've got the places for your cups and your remote control the stereo entertainment area looks really busy to me speakers control panels and a subwoofer there is storage behind the TV. Looks like a lot of I like of that. I like that. That's big, that's big storage there. So just a summary on the inside. Pros and cons. Pros, I like the cooktop. Mm -hmm. For Little power and pop stuff. Pop-up power stations. I like the uh, theater seating. Mm -hmm. Where you can enter into the bathroom either way is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. um, I like their storage behind the, the television. That was nice, yeah. I like the fact that they have vinyl through the kitchen to the living room. And I like it that. looked like that vinyl boat flooring or whatever. Yeah. Um, controls were nice. Yeah. I like the controls. The bathroom, I thought, was pretty spacious. The shower looked pretty nice. I like all the gizmos on the sink. Oh, you did? In the island? Yeah. In the bedroom, I like the fact they have a washer dryer hookup, but I don't like the fact that it takes away storage for closet space. Storage underneath the bed is always good, which I think almost all of them have that. Mm -hmm. On the bed lift, it's all aluminum framed. Oh, it was? Yeah. You like that? Yeah, a little bit sturdier. Oh, yeah. Okay. The cons on the bedroom, didn't like the fact there was no storage above the bed. I didn't like the fact there was no storage above the dresser. And the dresser is very, only has two cabinets because there's a fireplace there instead of more drawers. Your closet's fairly small because you've got a washer and dryer area, unless you use it as a closet. But they did have some shelving in there, which I like. Um, Wasn't big on the TV and the fireplace. Oh, yeah. Uh, the bathroom, the cons on that. I'm not a vessel person. I want to e easily just wipe down my counters and go. Um, I'm not a, a two-sink man. For, for an RV? For, for, that, for that amount of space, I'd rather have countertop. 
That's true, because we don't do anything at the same time in the right. bathroom anyways. Right. The bathroom isn't big enough to hold two people. Yeah, that's true. So why do you need two sinks? Probably an overall con is I don't like the shortness in the... Well, uh, we really don't know how tall well, the ceiling is. They have given you storage down below, so you they have lost... that your, up somewhere. You've lost your storage um, inside. I was guessing. And you didn't have any over the television. I was guessing probably the ceiling right there is about a little over seven foot. Yeah, what, over, what is it in here? It's in nine. There? Ours is nine. That's typical for a fifth wheel. Yeah. That doesn't have, that's not flat. Right. I mean, it obviously goes shorter once you get into the bedroom yeah. area. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to the outside. Storage galore. Lots and lots of doors. First thing I think about when you have these doors that open this way is if you're under a slide, you got to watch your noggin. That's nice. But I noticed there's a, a huge black tank right there with all sorts of plumbing going to it. Yeah. It's like you got ice skate down in there. It's huge. Oh, yeah, but so. they look at all the metal support beams you got to work around to get stuff out. Yeah. You don't be able to put certain size things in certain areas. That's true now with which, what you have, too. True with anything. So they got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven doors on this side, of which seven bay two doors. of them probably aren't storage doors. It goes passes all the way through. Yeah, chairs and toys and barbecues and what have you and, and bicycles. Now you would have to work around the, the steel beams that are providing support. What I don't like about it is someone's got to get in there, crawl around to get the stuff. But there, there's a ton of storage, but getting to it, I, I don't know. See, look, a ton of storage. Yeah. But I have a lot of stuff I want to store inside. And I would rather have more cabinetry inside and a taller height for the, the stuff thing, that the I have. The thing is, with all the storage, I mean, they got a door where you can get in it any which way you want. That's true. Now, if you have kayaks and stuff like that, I mean, you could put all of that in here. Oh, yeah. So I think it depends on your personal needs and preferences. If you don't mind the extra steps getting into the RV and taking up that space in the kitchen when you come in and you want flat and you have a lot of stuff to store in the basement and not so much inside, great way to go. I tell you what, the, the storage. Storage is good underneath. It looks like it has a side mount AC on it. Yeah, yeah, that is on the side. So it means it's not up on, on top. You don't have rooftop AC, which is nice. Well, maybe that provides them extra height. It does come with a backup camera, which is nice. Yeah, has a trailer hitch. Electric cord reel. i tell you what, it's easy to get to any of your valve work for your uh, drains if something should go wrong. But? But they're hanging right out there in the opening where it can catch a lot of road debris. I mean, I could see going over a rough terrain and yeah. that getting ripped off. They got motion lights in the basements too, which is nice. You open them up and got lights. Got a nice, nice gig there. A tankless oh, that. That's got to suck up some juice. They got a backup system of electronics that, going That out. tells me their, their system's going to fail. When you put, well, backups are nice to have. Oh, it's, stuff always happens. It, it does. I don't care what RV you have. Suspension. Low rating G tires. I would go with least H. Dual axle shackle suspension. All in all, I'm not, I wonder what the price tag is. But it's eighty-two thousand. Well, that ain't bad. I'd like to see it in person. I like my height in here. I like my extra cabinetry storage inside. I don't want it to go outside for my paper towels. <laughs> Get a can my... of beans. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I have a lot of storage up there. My camera equipment, games, um, tools that we use often, stuff that we want to use on the inside, I really don't want to have to go dig it out. And even though that basement is as huge as it is, I wouldn't want to have to put a lot of small stuff in there because it'd be hard to get it out again. Keep it so if you put everything like in plastic containers, slide this one over, slide that one over, and slide, you know. It'd be like in a Rubik's Cube. Yeah. But if you have lots of chairs, bicycles, yeah, grills. You know, big grills you know, and coolers. And, and screen tents and all that stuff. It, it'd be great for that. It, it depends on what you would want. I definitely would say go take a look at it if you want flat, oh, yeah. flat inside with a lot of outside storage. I would definitely take it. Looks like a, a great way it. to go. 
Yeah. Uh, take a look at it. Yeah. yeah. One of the things I noticed that uh, with those big storage bays and everything, it would take too long to get overweight when you start packing all sorts of stuff in there. Especially when the 4,055 pounds and it doesn't have a battery bank or a generator in it. And if you strap on 75 gallons of fresh water, 600 pounds, so now you're down to 3,400 pounds of gear. Uh, it's not a whole lot. <laughs> Just food for thought. What I think they could have done with the, the steps, the way it comes up into the coach, is have a, a floor type thing that you hit a button and the floor drops down over top of the, the steps, so you have usable floor space. You know, like for at night when you're not, when you know you're not going to go back out and things like that, or somebody comes, knocks on a door, you hit a button and it comes back up. That would work. Even if you did it manually. Yeah, even if it was manually where you reach down and pull it up. Just, I think that would make it better. I think you'd feel like the room was bigger as well. Yeah, yeah. the room would look definitely look bigger. But we like our DRV. We do. <laughs> I, like it. I like the inside story. We're spoiled. Yeah, well, there you go. I could go with a new stove. You could go with a new truck. What's that? I can get a new truck? <laughs> Not hardly. You heard it. It's on tape. I got it. So check out Arrowhead Campers. Ordering it tomorrow. Check out arrowheadcampers.com and you'll see what they have in the inventory. They have several of these in Mayfield, Kentucky. Tell us what you think about the flat fifth wheel in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. We'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Even if it's just to say hi. Don't forget to subscribe.